Okay, Tyler, Matthew here with FreePrescriptionLenses.com, and I'm about to show you how I make transition lenses for your Ray-Ban 2132, which I get to send to Pompano Beach, Florida. I've had two ice storms within seven days. You know how lucky you are to live in Pompano Beach, Florida? Okay, so we've got the Ray-Ban 2132, size 52, color 901, which is the classic shiny black. Let's pull it out, take a look at it. Here is your black leather Ray-Ban case. Here are your glasses, the Ray-Ban cloth, which they put in there upside down, and of course the crooked Ray-Ban G15 sticker. Now, Ray-Ban puts a little plastic sleeve on the glasses when they mail it to me. If they think it's a good idea to protect the temple, I'm going to put a second one on there when I ship to you. So, let's go ahead and get started. We've got a lot of ground to cover, so you, I can show your lens turning dark. Here's the first way on how to pop your lenses out. Turn the frame downward, and with your thumb at the nose. It's always your thumb, it's always in the nose. I grab, I'm right handed so I grab the frame with my left hand and you can torque the frame a little bit, you're not going to hurt it and with your thumb just push down where the lens pops right out in order to put them back in I rotate it upright I tuck it in at the outside corner closest to me and then again with my thumbs at the nose just push down and it snaps right in, piece of cake so I'm going to speed things up and take them out real quick here's your G15 lenses on the counter I'm going to put your Italian Ray-Ban Ray-Ban 2132, new Wayfair size, let's see, I have to pull this away, color 901, 52, of course I can't see when it's that close because those years have snuck up on me, 5218 is what it says, so I'm going to put your Italian made frame into my Italian Santinelli LE1000 patternless edger here at freeprescriptionlenses.com where everyone loves a bargain and no one is disappointed with quality. It is now tracing the shape of your right lens. It is going to scoot over and trace the shape of your left lens. And then I'm going to pop everything up on the computer and start cutting. It is now 7.46 on Tuesday, March 18th, 35 degrees in my hometown of Durham, North Carolina, at least according to my Samsung Gear watch. So 7.46, I got 20 minutes to get everything done or YouTube cuts me off. So I pull up the shape of your frame I'm going to put in if this were a prescription I'd put your pupillary distance because it's not I'm going to type have the PD match the frame PD this is a polycarbonate lens I'm going to cut it on the soft cycle and this is for a xyle frame which is an old school name for plastic now most plastics are acetates these are your lenses this is the pack it comes to me take them out of the little foam pack they send it to me in I am going to put it in my blocker if this were a prescription I'd put it in my Marco 101 lensometer dial it up I'm getting Plano no prescription so this is a block that's going to hold it in place while it's cutting I need to put a little sticky pad on there this is my 3M the black side is the sticky side of course the front side is about to be sticky when I pull this side off line everything up and put the block on of course I dropped that on the floor let me clean up after myself Lord knows if I make a mess back here in a lab in a workstation so here's your left lens put that in the blocker Pull off that sticker and get everything lined up in the center. Put that block on. So now into the chuck it goes. Hello, Chuck. Excuse me, Charles. So the first thing that's going to happen is the LMU. Well, first thing that's going to happen, I have to hit the start button. You would think for $30,000 the machine would just start. You still have to hit start. It's hard to find good quality help. I'm telling you, you're stuck with me. And I'm a licensed optician here in North Carolina. So the LMU is tracing the shape of your frame now. So the lens cuts out is tracing the concave side of the lens first, which is closest to your eyelashes. It is now going to trace the convex side of the lens, which is away from your face, using the reference point, figuring out the thickness of the lens. Now the actual cutting wheel is down here on the bottom. It is the lighter color wheel of the three. It is like a heavy grit sandpaper. This wheel in the center with the channel is going to put the bevel onto the lens so it stays inside the bevel of the frame. I will have to close the door in a moment, but for now I want you to see as the lens touches the cutting wheel. <coughs> Excuse me, got a little bit of a cough with this bad weather. So the first thing I'm going to do other than clean up my mess here, let me get your lenses ready for packaging. I'm going to take the G15 sticker off. I'm going to use my optical grade acetone to clean your lenses. They actually have a little bit of glue that Ray-Ban puts in there. 
it's an adhesive so they stay inside the frame better but I'm gonna remove that so it makes it easier for you to pop them in and out plus it smudges and I don't want any smudges on your lenses so let me clean these up I'm gonna take my cleaning cloth out which I will be sending you not only get your Ray-Ban one I'm gonna be sending you another one as well with instructions on how to care for them so they last you for years but I'll tell you right now once a month and whenever you see either cloth getting dirty just wash it at your kitchen sink with dish soap rinse it out with with water let it air dry on a dish towel or paper towel the older it gets the softer it gets the better it cleans let me clean this other lens up one last thing I'm gonna do before I put the sticker back on is I inspect every lens to make sure there's no defects or I've removed all the glue and adhesive and there's no scratches correct I'm going to take my foam sleeves that my lenses worth several hundred dollars, my invisible bifocals that I cut with transitions and anti-glare. This is what the Billion Dollar Lab sent to me. And I don't see my usual marker. So I'll have to use this one. So this is a Ray-Ban 2132, size 52, and this is the G15. So I'm going to put each lens into a foam sleeve so it cannot get scratched, fold it in half for twice the protection, and then tuck it in this pouch. Let me put the sticker back on, and this time I'm going to put it on a little clear, and I see one fingerprint I need to clean off. And then inside this foam sleeve, and then into this pouch to protect them for shipping. <coughs> Excuse me. Let me get my second temple tip ready. <clears throat> I save these. Whenever I sell a pair of glasses in the store, the people who walk out with them on never know that they come with these. But when I ship, I save those from the in-store purchases so I can send twice as many than Ray-Ban sends me. So I've taken it out. This is the shape now. I do want to dry the lens off so it's not slippery. I do not want to drop your lens with everybody watching, even if no one was watching. Um, it still has a little bit of rough edges, so what I'm going to do is use my hand stone, which is completely flat. It just works on friction. I'm going to go all the way around the edge of the lens to take off any rough edges. If you can see this white powdery substance that is on the lens, that is called Schwarf. That is optical sawdust. This is my trademark move. I use my thumbnail, which has a V-shaped bevel worn into it because I do this all day long. I wipe off all the Schwarf onto the counter, and then from the counter onto the floor. Ignore that you saw me pick up a piece of trash earlier. Trash is not acceptable. This I can put on the floor all day long. And as I'm fond of saying, kids, I went to school for years to learn how to wipe stuff on the floor. Don't expect to try and do this at home. So I'm going to try and mount the lens. I'm going to tuck it in at the outside edge closest to me. And with my thumbs pushed down at the nose, it snaps right in. Let's go ahead and cut your left lens. Flip that over to left and hit start same procedure as before it's going to come down and trace the shape of your your lens shape onto the lens to make sure it's large enough to cut out and if you didn't get a quick enough look the cutting wheel is on the left this is the channel where it grooves puts the the knife like edge or the oyster shell like edge it's not that sharp but that's what puts the bevel on this is a polishing wheel which i usually use on semi rimless oop someone else just made a purchase Let's see who that is. Come on, flip up right. I hope it hasn't gotten to me yet. It's a little slow. The internet service versus my phone. Now, according to my Samsung Note phone, which ties into my watch, sold some, let's see. Yep. One more purchase, I have to ship to Brazil now. So I'm going to take this block off the lens. There is that. Dry everything off. And so far that is your right lens. <coughs> now your lenses are made of the polycarbonate material which is virtually unbreakable. It is bulletproof up to 22 caliber. It has both UVA and UVB protection. We all know what the sun's harmful rays can do to your skin by burning it. Your eyes are eight times more sensitive than your skin. So this is like permanent sunscreen for your eyes now.
which I'm sure you get a lot of UV down in Pompano Beach, Florida. So Tyler, when you emailed me, you said you already had a, a pair of these in the 52 and the 55. Well done, well done. I have a few of my colors here. I've taken them home. I'm wearing the blue crystal today. I also have today the black beige, the blue rubber that I've almost worn into the ground, the classic tortoise, and the white which is discontinued. I don't like wearing it on the sales floor just because I can't sell it, but I still keep it here to show people hoping that Ray-Ban will bring that color back into, into stock. It's more of a summertime collection. Hopefully they will be bringing it back. I wonder what shipping charges are to, to ship to Brazil. Let's just see about that. One pair of lenses going to Brazil. A lot. A lot. Okay. You know, it's ironic when the shipping charges cost more than the lenses. But hey, I guess this is the cheapest place he can get them. And you're getting a pair free. How about that? How about that? Okay, out of the chuck it comes. Let me dry your lens off again. I'm going to put the safety bevel onto the lens. Use my V-shaped thumbnail, my occupational thumbnail that my friends call it. Wipe away the schwarf, and then onto the floor. You know it builds character. It uh, makes the lab look used. It's not so sterile looking. So again, to pop the second lens in, I tuck it in at the outside corner, and with my thumbs pushed down at the nose, it snaps right in. This is an unbreakable lens. You will not hurt the lens by popping them in and out. The glass lenses, you want to be careful not to drop on the floor. They will break. Let me pop this block off, pull the sticker off since it's no longer needed. And again, one quick demonstration to pop the lenses out. I turn the frame downward. I use the side closest to me and I use my thumb to push down at the nose and it pops right out. And if you saw me, I'm pulling back with one hand towards me and pushing with my thumb away with the other. And then to put it back in, instead of trying to cross over, I turn each side towards me. If I was doing the right lens, I'd have it this way. Doing the left lens, I hold it this way. With the frame turned upright, I tuck it in at the outside corner first and with my thumbs pushed down at the nose. And one more thing I want to do before I ship and before I turn these dark, and what time is it? We got time, we got time, is I'm going to get it in standard alignment where when I set it down on the table, it should have a three point stance. Those three points are one, two, and the bottom of the frame being three. I put it there, there is no wobble. I flip it over, do the same thing. Push down, there is no wobble. I make sure that each temple overlaps each other perfectly and the same amount of tension on each side. Now that that's done, let's go ahead and darken your lenses. You can see how they are clear now, Tyler. Now, I'm going to put them in my little transitions box to activate them and turn on the light. Essentially, there's an ultraviolet light inside there that's going to cause your lenses to turn dark. And as you see, all transition lenses will turn dark on day one. Give them two weeks. They're going to continue to darken every day for the first two weeks until they get to their final setting. Assume that they're exposed to the sun every day, which in Florida won't be a problem. Now, after that, they'll work for years with maximum performance. The only time they will not work is when you're behind the windshield in a traditional car. Your windshield absorbs all the sun's ultraviolet rays so your dashboard doesn't crack and your upholstery doesn't rot. That's why they won't turn dark in a car. They will turn dark as soon as you get outside and only when you're exposed to the sun. They will never do it indoors. Now, they do work best in cooler temperatures. Once it gets into the 90s and the upper 90s, they don't get as dark as it does when it's 80 and below. Now, in the upper 90s, your glasses are miserable, you're miserable, everyone's miserable, nothing works well in that kind of heat. So now the light came off. You can see how they have darkened, and don't worry. It's like a new employee on the job. You just got to train them for two more weeks to get them just perfect. Tyler, I really appreciate that you bought these from me. You got the free clear lenses, and all you had to do was pay the upgrade to the transition when you purchase these. If anyone has any questions, email me at freeprescriptionlenses at gmail.com. And Tyler, hopefully you enjoyed watching your glasses being made. 
and you can see how I bring that loving feeling back to glasses. Thank you.